Monday, I've got my chocolate chinos on, and it's time to go to work. It's been a while since I've vlogged anything and the truth is it's because I just simply haven't had the time and I guess the motivation. You know it's very hard when you watch YouTubers who have got millions of viewers and you see their crazy life and then I try and see the reality of my own and it does make me a little bit despondent. But still, I'm not going to give up taken a little bit of a break not intentionally just because I'm human and that's just sometimes how life goes but yeah I'm ready to start again I'm going to give you a quick update and we'll take it from there all right so I'll still take my daily rides to work I'm really busy at work Lots of roadworks going on. It's gotten way colder and so I think winter's winter's coming. Um it's definitely you know getting a bit chilly, definitely having to wear longer tops to work and things like that. Um I will be heading to New York in May, so I've seen the weather report there and it looks really cold. I'm hoping that it's warmed up a little, but if not, if nothing else, it should be the end of season sales and I should get myself a really great jacket. So let's see what happens there. Um, I'm off to 99U, which is a creative leadership conference sponsored by Adobe. Who doesn't love bubble wrap? My book apart mugs, and I think the one I ordered is book number four, which is from a book apart, which is responsive web design. This is their book, which is brief books for people who design, write, and code. My intention today was to try and catch up on, on what's been going on in my life and um, try and keep you all in the loop so that nobody thinks I'm abandoned my vlog um, and to explain you know what have I been busy with and, and the simple answer is I've been busy with work I've been really focused there I haven't given myself a lot of time to make and I need to you know allocate time to that but you know, today I'm feeling a little under the weather. I've got food poisoning the other day, and uh, it's not something I've ever really experienced before. And so, you know, I'm struggling a bit with that, and I'm a bit flat and all thing. But you know, I really wanted to get a vlog out, and, and so I'm sitting here now at home. Not terribly exciting. I'm not moving. I'm not doing anything fancy. But yeah, I thought it would be a good time to kind of talk about. Um, a few things that are going on, you know, I'm, I'm tackling some very interesting problems at work. Let me just adjust this camera. So, yeah, tackling some very interesting problems at work, you know. We, we, we work in, you know, an agile manner. And, and uh, you know, when people talk about that, you know, I, I get very confused sometimes because I'm not formally trained in any of this stuff. I've just learned it like everybody else uh, online and, and through courses 
I've done online and, and articles that I read and, and information everywhere. But, you know, if I go back to some of the principles that I've learned, you know, they just don't resonate with design. You know, you're taking something that is development methodology and process and forcing it on design and design just doesn't work like that. You know, you, you should be working on delivering something, not a finished piece of software. I mean, that, that makes no sense to me. This, you know, uh, the agile construct says that in a certain period of time, we will take on a certain amount of tasks that we feel we could deliver to the best of our ability and we will have an output at the end. We can change our scope to a certain degree, but you know, we don't necessarily have to commit to something now as an end product in a long period of time. So you now have the flexibility to change, adapt and everything else, and I get that. But when people go and they take things so literal and go, you have to have a working piece of software, I go, you're mad. It just doesn't work like that as designers. So as designers, we need to have a larger discovery phase. The, especially at scale, especially at scale, that's the, that's the crucial point. But at scale, you've probably built up a great foundational design system that you can use, and a, a UI, I suppose, in that system that you can use over and over again, because depending on what you do, and, and for us, it's, it's uh, banking, there's pretty much the same components used over and over and over again. You know, input fields, forms, dashboards, um, you know, payment flows, uh, servicing against your accounts, you know, things like that. That's the general thing. And, and, and when you look at it all, there's actually not that many parts. It's just how you utilize them. So when you go, okay, so you don't have to create all those parts anymore. You just got to find great ways to piece them together to get the output that you want. So that's all fine and well, but knowing your customers is a very different thing. When you go through a customer centric approach to things, well, the first thing is to identify the problem, validate that with customers, do some research with customers, do some research into your market, the industry, the competitors, or whatever else. That's not gonna happen in a day. That's not gonna happen in one sprint. That could happen over several sprints. Then it's starting to say, what is the current journey map? You know, or, or, or what is the current kind of journey that a customer, a customer goes through? So you, you got to look at that and go, that's the current thing. But what do we want to do to better it? And what has our, our research taught us? What has best practice taught us? You know, what is broken? What doesn't need to be fixed? What systems are in place? In, in the current construct of things, there is a discovery phase and there is an execution phase. They usually sit like that. It's probably like a 20, 80 or 30, 70% ratio in most uh, project plans. On paper, it all makes sense. But then the truth is the, the way things are in reality and given uh, how design works, you have a discovery phase and a short execution phase because all those components, all those things are designed and coded already. The discovery is knowing your, car, uh, your customer, building solutions that meet their needs, going and looking at competitor analysis, mapping out journeys, past to future states, the entire, entire service um, map that you need to create. There are so many things that are involved in all of this that it just makes no sense for me to somebody to say, no, it's got to work in this agile manner. And in a sprint, you've got to have a working piece of software at the, at the end. It's just not what we do as, as designers. And so you've got to have a methodology that works for that. Now, I'm a self-taught designer and a passionate designer. You can't buy that. You can't study passion. You can't do anything. So I work differently. You couldn't ask me to explain exactly how I work. I think whoever these clever people are who've managed to go and construct this career of designers good for them not who I am 
not in my world does this make any sense. You know, it makes sense to be talent, skill, passion, drive, uh, you know, innovation. And innovation can't happen through testing. I mean, testing most of the time is a way of getting away with uh, not making a decision or not actually knowing how to do something is to hide behind testing. So uh, I'm not a big fan of that either, although I do believe in doing some sort of testing to make sure that things resonate. I don't think all testing is necessarily right. And I think people do it at the wrong phases. They don't do it with the right um, amount of people. And so, yeah, I, I, I don't believe in that either. So I think the thing that I'm trying to say here is that you know, one of the problems that I face day to day is that I've got all these people who go on these agile courses and they've got scrum masters and they work in sprints and they've got to deliver software and it just doesn't work for me. Okay, so I'm not really sure that is much of an update today. Like I said, I'm not feeling great. Um, and I, I've definitely been busier. I feel like now I'm in front of the camera and like, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I really think that when you maybe deal with things more in real time, it's easier to address things. Um, so maybe I just need to do that, even if they're short, few minute vlogs more frequently would probably add more value. I know this is a pathetic version of the vlog, and you know, I once saw this thing with Peter McKinnon, who went like, your first few vlogs are going to be terrible, and I thought like, okay, so your first three vlogs are just shocking. Well, I'm going, this is episode 20, and uh, I still don't think I've nailed it, not even close. Um, my editing's shoddy, the audio's terrible, lighting sucks, um, you know, putting a filter over everything just because it looks better. <laughs> uh, I, I add these odd transitions, like here and there. Um, and most of the time, really, the kind of better material and the stuff that's been the most viewed is the stuff where I'm just sitting in front of the camera and I'm talking about being a designer. So, yeah, I think that I probably just need to do these short things, not be so critical about, you know, how does it all look and, and stuff like that. It's going to suck, but I think eventually I'll just find my rhythm and uh, that's really all it, it is and, and hopefully everybody appreciates it. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment and stay cool.